What's up guys, welcome back to Newswave. So yesterday we had a leak come out of the PlayStation Network database that got people pretty excited as it deals with Unreal Engine 5 and the Matrix. We're gonna go over that one here today. Also, we are gonna be talking about a new build that's been proposed that would be dealing with those really annoying bots that try to scoop up all of the PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X systems when you're at checkout on Walmart or Best Buy's website. And we're also gonna be talking about a big shakeup over at EA that could change the future of Battlefield forever. Guys, if you enjoy these videos, make sure that like button helps out a ton. And if you're new here to the Spawn Wave channel, make sure you subscribe down below and ring that notification bell so you can keep up to date with all the uploads here on the channel. And we're going to start today with Halo Infinite. Specifically, though, a new dynamic background for the game. We can see this demonstrated over on Twitter by Tom Warren, where he says, Microsoft has added two new Xbox dynamic backgrounds for the Xbox Series X and S today. There's a new Halo Infinite one and a Wasteland 3 one. So there you go, Wasteland fans. Check that out. But obviously... I'm very interested in the Halo Infinite dynamic background because the hype is continuing to build up to the campaign release next week. And I mean, the background itself looks really cool. It's got Chief in the middle of combat there with a the subtle movement around him. So yes, I'll be changing the background on my Xbox to this immediately. But next week, the campaign's dropping and I am really looking forward to it. I've been playing the multiplayer for a while now, right? Ever since it released, it's been constant. Every single day I've been playing this multiplayer and it like, the gameplay is good, the gunplay is solid. I just have to hope that they got Master Chief's story correct uh, with this campaign release. It also sounds interesting with the semi-open world experience that they've crafted here. So here's hoping they got the storytelling right because it seems anyway that the gameplay side of things is gonna be okay. But uh, I guess we'll find out next week on the 8th. Also, we did have that Mario Kart 8 Nintendo Switch bundle for Black Friday and Cyber Monday. And it looks like Walmart has created another bundle going live today. We can see this over on their website, Nintendo Switch bundle, get the system, a carrying case, and 12 month membership, only $299. So the basic price of the red box switch. So this will be the one with the better battery and all that. That V1 switch is pretty much retired completely now. Even the Mario Kart 8 Deluxe bundle was like the red box switch there. Um, but the carrying case, sure, a 12 month individual membership. All right, why not? I mean, that's like maybe like what a $40 value kind of added on to the, to the system at its normal price. The 12 month membership at least will give you access to the online and then uh, Nintendo and Super Nintendo games. But looking at this, not as good as what we had with the Mario Kart 8 Deluxe bundle because that's like one of the most, or the most popular game I should say on the Switch. It being included with three months of online was nice. This is, I guess, just the, the next bundle up right at this point. But it's available starting today, and I have a feeling it will go very, very quickly because the Mario Kart 8 Deluxe Bundle sold through no problem at all. In fact, it massively spiked sales across all different regions. So yeah, it seems like when a Switch is just in stock, especially online, they just sell out. So make sure you check this bundle out if you're just trying to find one for the holidays. Oh, and we have a bit of an update to that uh, PlayStation Plus Godfall story that we covered yesterday. Very strange announcement because it's like a Godfall demo almost. Well, it looks like in Japan, they're actually getting a bit of a different lineup and I would say just a better lineup overall. We can see this over on Push Square, noting that in Japan, their lineup will be LEGO DC Supervillains, the Godfall Challengers Edition, the basically the demo, the Sexy Brutal, and Judgment. Yeah, that, that quite a bit better there as they do have something like Judgment that is the full game. That is a very good game. Whereas Godfall, yeah, it, it, it's... It's annoying because it's this demo and it's weird that they're technically putting it behind PlayStation Plus. You would expect that to be the entire Godfall game, but no, this is the direction they went in. Judgment is a very good game, I think, to have on PlayStation Plus because, yeah, it'll get some people to try out the game and then maybe look into Lost Judgment. It's just weird, once again, that Godfall Challengers Edition is, like, is the big game for the month because it's like a very small section of the overall Godfall game. And if you want the rest of it, you, you gotta pay up. And guys, with some of the quick news out of the way, let's get into the bigger stuff. Let's start right away with this new leak out of the PlayStation Network database. We'll head over here to Reddit where it was first spotted saying, looks like we're getting an Unreal Engine Matrix movie tie-in based on information published on the PSN backend. No details, only that it exists for PS5. We have the title ID, concept ID, and some key art. We can see the Matrix Awakens, an Unreal Engine 5 experience. Now, I am very excited for the Matrix Resurrection 
Resurrections, that's coming up uh, in a couple of weeks here, actually, in theaters. Big fan of the older Matrix movies, so obviously looking forward to, to seeing a brand new Matrix movie here in, in 2021. An Unreal Engine 5 experience. This has gotten people really speculating as to what this could be. Some very hopeful that it's a game. Others thinking it's just a, like a tie-in experience to build up to the movie's release. That's kind of the way I'm leaning with this one. I don't think it's going to be a Matrix game, which is a real shame because now with where we are with technology, with like a PlayStation 5 and the Xbox Series X and the newer video cards we have and all of the all of the tech and concepts and features and stuff we have with it, they can make some really cool uh, uh, ideas work in a Matrix game. And that, that'd be so awesome to see an actual budget put behind that because we had Enter the Matrix back in the day. I didn't like it as much. But at the time, it was really cool because they had specific scenes that tied into the movies as part of that. And that was still right at that time period where we were getting actual full motion video that looked like a movie in our games. It, it was, I know it sounds weird now because you look around and half the time we just have our cutscenes like rendered real time. But back then it was a big deal. But then Path of Neo came out and that changed everything. That game was awesome. It still is, but I think if we had a remaster or a remake of something like that and maybe even Enter the Matrix, that would be really cool, especially building up to this Matrix movie. I think this is more or less going to be them demonstrating what Unreal Engine 5 can do. First of all, probably Epic, maybe doing like a sponsor deal or something with that. But to go a bit further, they'll probably work to build up to the release of the movie, just getting people hyped up. Something you go on and just download on your PlayStation 5 and essentially enter the matrix there, right? So that's more or less what I'm looking at here. More of a promotional piece rather than a new game or really even something to play. Maybe you go in and you just kind of navigate around menus and you see Unreal Engine 5 working to render different scenes. That, that's all I can really think of here, but we'll have to keep an eye on this. It's already in the database now with the PlayStation Network, so it could just release at any time, and then I guess we'll find out. The one thing that's a shame is I don't think this is going to have anything to do with VR, and that's a pretty big missed opportunity because we don't have Sony's new headset out until next year, and that would have been something that could have been really cool when it comes to a big tie-in and promotional event. You actually use the new VR headset, all of the cool new features there too, literally enter the matrix. Next up, let's talk about those annoying bots that seem to be scooping up PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X systems to be resold left and right. Half the time, out of your cart when you're just trying to put your information in quickly to get through checkout. Well, it looks like now we could see the government step in to get rid of them or at least rein them in a bit. We can see this over on VGC where they say a group of US Democrats have introduced a new bill in the hope that it will ban the use of bots to scalp high value items including game consoles. The, the Stopping Grinch Bots Act, that's interesting, is being introduced by several representatives, including Paul Tonko and Richard Blumenthal. Quote, at a time when families should be able to spend time with their loved ones, digital Grinch bots are forcing Americans to scour online sites in hopes of finding an affordable gift or paying exorbitant prices for a single toy. Our Grinch Bots Act works to level the playing field and prevent scalpers from sucking hardworking parents dry this holiday season. I urge my colleagues to join me in passing this legislation immediately to stop these Grinch Bots from stealing the holidays. It goes on to say the new legis legislation, if passed, would apply a similar ban to online retail sites, making it illegal to use bots to buy up stock as soon as it's made available. This in reference to uh, the Better Online Ticket Sales Act, which did essentially the same thing when it came to uh, buying event tickets. You would have bots crash these sites and then they would start popping up on secondary sites where they'd be looking to resell them for double or even triple the value. And I will say, I think a lot of people are just frustrated and annoyed with having to deal with these bots in general, compete with essentially things that can get through checkout faster than you and <laughs> pull a lot of these systems off of the digital store shelves because that's basically where we're buying the PS5 and the Xbox Series X. Since they released, they still haven't shown up in stores at all. From what I can tell, we are basically at the mercy of the digital age, even when it comes to physical hardware, at least for now. Here's hoping in the next year or two, we can go into a Walmart or a Best Buy and just pick it off the shelf and buy it if we would like to. But at this time, it comes down to, for me anyway, having to deal with an unfair advantage when it comes to these bots. If you're someone who just wants to go on there when these things drop in stock on Walmart or Best Buy, 
go through the checkout like everyone else and you get one and you want to resell it. Well, hey, you went through the checkout and you did it. Back in the day when we did the PS3 and even the Wii midnight release, there were people there who were waiting in line, freezing cold out, but they sat there for hours and hours and hours. They bought the system and they went off and resold it. They had talked about it for a while in line, so they were going to get a Wii for $250. I think at one point, Wiis were going for over $1,000. So it's a pretty good markup there. But hey, they waited in line. They didn't run a farm of bots to crash a website and pull 10 systems out in the blink of an eye. And while I'm not usually excited for a government to come in and start playing around with our video games, in this case, it's more or less trying to set a level playing field, something they had to do when it came to event tickets. So at this point, whatever we got to do to get rid of these bots or at least rein them in, I am curious how exactly they'll be enforcing this, what measures Walmart or Best Buy or others will have to take. I guess we'll find out more about that as we go along because at this time it's simply proposed. We'll have to see if it actually passes. Next up, let's talk about EA and the Battlefield franchise as it looks like that franchise is going to be seeing a pretty big shakeup when it comes to management and development going forward. We can see this over on GameSpot who first reported it saying EA announces a restructuring of its development teams as it looks to grow Battlefield. Electronic Arts is making major changes to its development structure as it focuses on growing and expanding the Battlefield series following what has been a challenging launch for Battlefield 2042. They have announced that there will be a Battlefield universe that will span multiple games and offerings. And they go on to say, additionally, DICE GM Oscar Gabrielson is leaving the company to pursue a new endeavor outside of EA. The shakeup also includes Respawn's Vince Sampella taking on a bigger role as the new overall boss of the Battlefield franchise, while Halo designer Marcus Leto is building a new development team in Seattle focused on injecting more storytelling into the Battlefield universe. Ripple Effect, the developer of Battlefield 2042's Portal Mode, is developing a new Battlefield experience in the Battlefield 2042 universe. So first of all, this is a pretty funny situation if you really consider what's happening here. Think back to 2016. Titanfall 2 releases, and then we have Battlefield 1 release. Battlefield 1 was from DICE. Titanfall 2 was from Respawn. Well, Titanfall 2 kind of got buried and run over by Battlefield 1 and also Call of Duty. But now, Vince Sempella from Respawn, again, dealing with all this 2016, is now taking on a more prominent role, essentially has been framed here as the boss of Battlefield now, going from Respawn to, to DICE. It's just the way that all works out, right? Who, who would have thought? But I think this is a great move overall because Respawn has been on absolute fire right now. I mean, they are doing really, really well. Apex Legends... I know it has its issues, but functionally, it's a very good game. And I would like to see them step in and, I, I guess, not really necessarily fix, but work on Battlefield a bit more going forward. And remember, this was just a multiplayer experience. We have uh, people coming in now to work more on the story side of things. Even Portal, which is a very popular uh, mode in Battlefield 2042. Evan told me that was like the big reason he was even playing Battlefield 2042 for a while because you kind of go back in time and play like Bad Company 2 uh, as an example. To have that kind of split off with that studio and then sort of work on their own game or experience within the Battlefield universe, I think is a great idea. They have a lot of work to do with Battlefield 2042 and they are releasing more and more patches as we go along, but I am curious to see what Vince Sampella and Respawn's take even would be on Battlefield going forward. Do you think it would actually be a lot better? Because I kind of feel like it would, at least from a management side, because who Battlefield has had some rough times getting to just the release of 2042 and then post 2042. So this is something we probably won't see effects of for a new game for years to come, but I have a feeling they will be taking them in the right direction. I guess we'll find out though as we go along. And in our last bit of news, let's talk about a new game announcement for the Switch. It's a very expected announcement because we already saw ratings for this game with like the ESRB and other ratings board. And we can see some of the trailer here. That's .hackgu last recode. We do have a release date for it on the Switch. That'll be March 10th, 2022. So not too much longer here. Of course, this is a compilation of the .hackgu games. And I think it's very good. Uh, the problem here obviously is that it's, I mean, it's gonna be a full price game on the Switch, whereas it's super cheap on the PlayStation. However, these type of games, I think, work really well with the Switch's hybrid concept as a lot of these JRPGs uh, tend to, I think, be a bit better off as a handheld game, something you can pick up and play easily, put it in a sleep mode, then come back to it without too much issue. Um, but 
it, it is a shame that Dot Hack GU Last Rico took so long to come to the Switch. I mean, it's been on the PlayStation for years now, and I Bandai was really behind the ball when the Switch released, and it's pretty obvious as we are seeing some of these games come out years and years later. Makes me think that something like Tales of Arise is still years off for the Switch. Scarlet Nexus, years off, but at least they are slowly catching up to a system that seemed to catch them off guard completely as they did admit that to their own investors. So here's hoping they can maybe spin up a bit faster and get some of these games ported over a bit sooner. But there we go. We now have the official announcement and release date for Dot .hack coming next year. And before we go to the comment of the day, we're taking a little poll that I posted up yesterday, where I asked, have you played either of the Matrix games from the PS2 era, either Path of Neo or Enter the Matrix? 34% said yes, I played at least one. 66% said no, I never played them. We need the remaster. I don't know, can we do a collection? You do like the Matrix collection, Path of Neo and Enter the Matrix. Maybe you could just do Path of Neo. That's the one, if you're gonna pick one or the other, Path of Neo. Like I said, End of the Matrix was interesting at the time, but I think Path of Neo really capitalized on the entire Matrix franchise in a video game form. We all wanted to play as Neo, and we got our chance to do so there, and it was, the combat was fun. They had these slow-mo moments, of course, and you really felt powerful in the game, taking on all kinds of enemies. The one thing that was cool about End of the Matrix was the movie tie-in, but sometimes the combat I thought was Pretty cool. You'd punch somebody and it would sound like a shotgun blast. So they at least had, I guess, the overall impact of the combat down, but Path of Neo to me was just the more fun overall experience. And yeah, that should be remastered for current platforms. And we'll finish up with the comment of the day as you're seeing here. This is from Deuce saying, I was only going to check out Godfall as a technical demo anyways. So this doesn't bother me, but it's a very weird decision. Well, yeah, I guess if you're checking it out just for the visual side of things, you're like, oh, I wanna see how this game looks on my new PlayStation 5, and I have PlayStation Plus. To be honest, there are better games to do that with. You can just download God of War. There you go, that, that's a great uh, way to, to see what your PS5 can do with that new patch that, that uh, pushes the frame rate up, all of that. The Godfall thing is weird because back in the day, at least when we paid for a demo, which this PlayStation Plus, you're still paying for it, you got a magazine and a disc with it too, right? It's just, you feel like Godfall wasn't good enough or had enough of a draw to say, well, no, no, you can't have the whole game. You can only have the demo. Judgment is a much better game and that was just put on PlayStation Plus. So I don't know what this whole thing is with Godfall. I, I guess they really think that you'll get to the end game and then all of a sudden want to go back to the beginning and pay out for the digital deluxe version to do that. And ladies and gentlemen, that's gonna be here for Newswave. If you enjoyed this video, guys, hit that like button. It really helps out. If not, hit the dislike. Leave comments down below about everything we talked about here today. There's this Matrix Awakens leak from the PlayStation Network. What do you think it is? And are you excited for the new Matrix movie coming out here in a couple of weeks? Also, what about this new bill that's been proposed to cut down the different PlayStation 5, Xbox, and even switch bots. And then Vince Sampella taking a more prominent role at DICE overseeing Battlefield. What do you think the future holds for this franchise? Thanks guys for watching. Have a great weekend. I'll see you back here Monday morning, 8 a.m. Eastern time for Newswave.